You know, in this video, I'm going to cover my smallest Sterling engine with some of my smallest motors, and I'll show you what you can do with it. We'll move up to the bigger stuff later, but let's start with this one. We're going to be generating DC electrical power, and it's right here on my voltage meter. It's labeled like this. It's got that line with three dots, whether it's in milliamps or in larger amps and volts. And you'll see it in the Egyptian stuff like this. They'll have it. They have these molecules that show standing waves in flight. See, they have the three dots in the line, and that would be slow DC. I'm just showing you some of this stuff. We're going to move on, and this is the basic definition of how a power station works. So if you want to generate your own electrical power, you've got to get that turbine moving. That's the trick. You've got to spin. You've got to spin that to get that electrical power. You've got to get that shaft moving. And that's through the laws of induction. That's how you're going to generate electrical power. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it. Making direct current electricity, here's a few. So we're going to use an electromagnetic generator that's already built. Like this one right here. We're going to use some electrodes and I'm going to show you how to make HHO and hydrogen gas and oxygen. And we're going to get the lights turned on and we're going to use this little tiny motor right here. And this was made by Robert Sterling. And the guy was a genius. You need to go on Wikipedia and read about the Sterling engine. We're going to go over here. This is an alpha model. We're going to run this thing on hydrogen. We're going to hit it with everything. We're going to run it with everything I got. We'll see what she can do. So you need to go on here and read about hot air engines and Mr. Robert Sterling. You know, you should be able to buy these engines at any gas station or any Walmart, but that's not the way it works. They've take these things and nerfed them. And there's a reason, because it's an external combustion engine. And if you have this, you basically have your own power plant. Let's move on. Get her running nice and steady. with the smallest motor I got. I got motors that are a lot larger. So in a hydrogen society, the idea is to take all of the available electricity, no matter where it comes from, and turn it right back into hydrogen gas. And you got to get the whole separation thing down if you're not making HHO. If you really want to store the gas and have long-term storage and get rid of batteries and things like that and just go directly to gas system, you have to get your power plants and everything in your city running to where you're producing hydrogen gas only. That's the trick. You can store your oxygen too, but you have to store it separate. Doesn't matter how you're making your electricity from the sun, through the Stirling engine, 
through wind turbines. So depending on what kind of energy source you hook up to this thing, it doesn't matter if it's a pile of wood, a candle, HHO, hydrogen, butane, propane, you name it. In space, NASA uses nuclear power. They put a huge piece of plutonium on the end of this thing and it stays hot for like a thousand years or something or however long the half-life is. And that's what keeps the Stirling engine running in space, making electrical power for satellites. So if it's good enough for NASA, it's good enough for you. And if you want to make AC power, it's a little different measuring and making AC and DC. Alternating current, you're going to need a different shaft, a different motor. You can get one out of the bottom of a microwave. There's a little AC generator at the bottom of every microwave if you're interested. But we're going to do that in another video. And the real trick is you want to fill that, that engine up with pure hydrogen. That way there's no resistance. You'll have no resistance. You guys know the symbol. See, if you put pure hydrogen gas in there, there's no resistance on that motor. It's not like ambient air that you have. So think about that. It has a lot to do with what you put inside these motors, too. If you fill it with hydrogen gas, 